lovely, luscious Linda, a bejeweled spectacle of scarlet and blue in an otherwise colourless, thorny world. Her ornate, light blue dress has slipped up her legs slightly, revealing the marble smoothness of her skin. Her eyes are intense and they dig deep into my soul, like sunshine probing the dust of a Ronda coal shaft. Waldo, I wish you were brave enough to share your truth. It's uncanny. How on earth can she read me so effortlessly? Cleth gwych ar y clawdd gwar, Seven wyr ddew, safon o'r ddeyar. Arf bro i herio o'r wynt, Er lliw a chân gwan y gwynt. Ma gwedd rhwng sawer cleth clai, Antir si, cynt ar lliwiau, Trwy fungol maen o'r wain wyw, Ti ar chwedail, torch y dew. Prydferthwch bro, Defroad melin gorn ymlaen y gad. Lediai maes, ladi mawrth, a manerch, eirferch, oir fawrth. Ni faith o'n liliwen fach o'th flaen, ni tha fai lanach. Atolog, du gar do ol, do mawr yr ardd dymhorol. Hyd o'i'l hangel dawelaf, a'i ferl hwyr, a'i ffarwel haf. A gwig adfael, gwag advais. Ladi mawrth, lediai maes. Who in their right mind would throw away this precious connection? No one but me. You're a good man, Waldo. I'd like to be, but I don't think I am. I'd like to believe in God, but I don't think I do. I'd like to love, but I don't think I can.
I knew fully well that my pain was unquestionably linked with the trauma of stillbirth. I had become pregnant almost immediately after we got married, exactly as we had planned, and it had made us both so happy despite the ongoing war. I wished that I could point to a particular event that had caused our baby's death, but I couldn't. It had simply happened, without explanation and for no reason. Yes, I was concerned about Waldo losing his job, but I couldn't identify that as the cause, because my joy of becoming a mother outshone all other worries. up early one morning, without anything unusual having happened, and somehow knew immediately that the baby was dead. After the stillbirth, I had asked to see it. They were reluctant at first, but I had insisted, forcefully, so finally they had succumbed. She was shiny and crimson, raw and bruised, but wonderfully peaceful. She had delicate fully formed features. She had laid on her side with her tiny head resting on her hands as if she were only sleeping. She was beautiful. No one could deny that. Had she not wanted to live? I had thought. Was this war-torn world not worthy of her impeccable innocence? It was at precisely that moment the pain had started. An instant physical expression of grief. I knew it intuitively, regardless of whatever medics had to say. at such a stubborn angle, jutting out like a flame blown by a passing gust with its enduring myth. What's so funny, Mr. Genie? You and me, girl. What can he mean? I thought of its concrete innards, a solid mass in its gut, and also in mine. Well, my friend, if that's what it takes to keep your memory alive, then so be it. What if the illness is as bad as I dread? What will become of poor old Waldo? Would he find another wife? Maybe a Welsh speaker? He liked that. Or would he remain forever loyal to me? Become monk-like, construct a mausoleum for me in his head to carry around wherever he went? I hope not. Or will he finally be consumed by inner darkness, by his lifelong demon?
Linda died last year of tuberculosis peritonitis, having recently turned 31 years old. We've been married for just over two years. Since then, I've been trying to convince myself that I didn't do anything in particular to warrant such ill wind, that it is only hard, rotten, sickening luck. <laughs> Each new day continues to be a challenge. I go through the motions of living, of projecting a, a pretense at vitality, enthusiasm and carelessness, while in reality, I walk unremittingly amongst the gloomiest of ruins. In every familiar place I go, I encounter smatterings of her laughter, still lingering from our last visit. Her traces are the shadows in which I now walk. Even in new places, there is no escaping the shadow. It is still present, only slightly nuanced. countryside, after all, is my staunchest church and chapel. With every century that passes, it is eroded, both systematically and haphazardly, impoverishing the overall quality of what it is, what it means to be human. I forcefully drag my mind away from such thoughts and open up my senses to nature, to the colours of wayside flowers, the feel of the wind in my hair, the creaking sounds of magpies, and the stirring aroma of wild garlic. If I were here with Linda, she would have laid her head on my lap. I would have dragged my fingers through her thick locks. She would sing for ages, carrying my thoughts far and wide, across the bay and beyond. Pira Hedu and 
She would have wanted to stay here indefinitely. Just the two of us. And our time here in this idyllic little cove would have been an adoration, a worship, a sacrament. <laughs> 